we're here with the first official episode on the E46M3. The Vanos coil pack is now here. We have the Vanos sealing kit too, with just the O-rings that go on the plate. And then we have the new unit right here from, what is it, Bison? However you say that. We have our seats. And obviously we have our car that needs a bunch of work. So I am getting sick, so kind of bear with me. Might be a little bit slower today. Might hear it in my voice. But we got a little pile of parts too. We're gonna do oil change and use an oil level sensor. Uh, we need to clean the filter and I need to put in hood struts or else the hood's gonna fall on me. I'm gonna throw in the hood struts real quick and then we'll start disassembling the car. All right, I went to put the hood struts on and these things are so tight with compression, you can't even push them in. I literally had to push it against the ground and had all my weight and it was barely closing in. So I'm gonna leave it like this. It'll give me more room and more light when we do Vanos and we'll come back to that. Okay, we got the unit out. Everything's here, super dirty, but this is obviously one of the most simple things you can do with Vanos. So we're gonna go ahead and disassemble the rest of it, swap over the new coil pack, clean it out, and get the new O-rings on there. This will be our little setup to clean and replace the parts. As you can see from both of these, that there's a bunch of grime and just a lot of gunk all built up inside of it. Uh, it wasn't inside inside, but it's all around the edges, which is obviously when you take it out, Get spread around so all this needs to be cleaned. I have the original unit off. You can see it's BMW stamped, but look how much stuff is caked on it. And look at this. This should not look like this. It shouldn't be this caked up. Uh, watching other people's tutorials, theirs is not nearly as bad. But like I said, this car is 215,000 miles. So it's definitely in need of a good cleaning, and this service was long overdue. I'm at the step right now where I'm just taking out the old seals from this, and as you can see, they're in a million pieces, and all of this is actually part of the seal. Uh, this is probably the most tedious part of the job is just cleaning out this. Uh, I had to use this broken, um, actually like carpenter knife, I'm trying to be as smooth and as gentle as possible so I don't actually etch the metal, but without doing this, there's really no way to get all of the actual gasket out. So you can see that I'm doing this over and over and there's still like little fragments, there's still little pieces. I think I'm gonna run it like this and if it causes any problems, any issues, um, I don't think these are too expensive and I'll just go ahead and get another one because I don't know what else to really do about this. I don't think it should be a problem. It should seal just fine, but I might try a little bit more just to be safe and then we'll throw in the new O-rings. Okay, we're back with the assembly process. We put this back in and we put the coil pack back on. And now, sad to say, we're gonna have to pull this off real quick. So our unit is now fresh and rebuilt and we just gotta put it back in the car. All right, everything is back together. We're gonna go ahead and give it a first start and see if that has fixed our issues. Obviously, it's known that when it's first installed, you still might get some symptoms and some weird running, but let's get this thing started and let's get some idle time in it. Damn, I'm kind of scared. Let's see. All right. We're gonna go ahead and check. There's no other weird lights on. It is stumbling a little bit. It just went to stall right now, but it caught itself and adjusted, so that's good. So it's getting itself figured out. 
So it sounds decent, it sounds pretty healthy. You can feel it, it feels like a slight misfire still. Uh, I'm gonna scan it and see what other codes we have still pending. All right, I keep hearing a random loud, I don't know if it's a knocking, ticking, or if it's something rubbing when it goes to stall. Sheesh. Do I need a motor? Bucket LS swap? It definitely sounds a lot healthier, but without driving the car and putting some miles on it, I don't know, can you hear that? As soon as I walk away, it did it. That, what the hell is that? I just revved it and it stalled, but the check engine light went away on its own, so. Come on, man. Put this shit in sport mode. Uh, the check engine light went away on its own, so I guess that's a positive, but it's a little more stumbly and a little more bumping around with the idle than I would expect it. I would have thought it kind of evened out by now. I do know the car has a few other issues, so I know that is the main and the most concerning issue that we just dealt with, but uh, I'm going to just keep this thing idling and see how it feels. Also, it's high idle. So, I don't know what that's about. It should have died down by now. I believe it was doing this before too, so I'm gonna have to see what that is. The check engine light cleared by itself and then it came back by itself. So now, camshaft position is the only code and it's saying mass airflow, but I don't think so. I think it's because we had it unplugged. I'll just double check and make sure it's plugged in. But I think this is the next concern. So I'm gonna have to look up what this is and hopefully it's just actually Maybe something simple or just the actual camshaft position sensor and not something Vanos related. I'm just going to go ahead and start it again and see how it is. See if it's getting any better. This thing stinks though. Whatever it is, this just stinks. It runs pretty smooth. Also, that clutch fan looks like it's about to go. It looks a little wonky, but that's gonna have to hold off. It is running without stalling. Let me try giving it a quick little rev again. I just wanna see, cause that is the first indication that it's gonna stall. Other than that, it just has a super high idle. I don't know why. Okay, not bad. Sounds like shit, but not bad. So it does seem like it's correcting itself. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear these again one more time and I'll see what comes back. And I'll just go ahead and order up a new camshaft sensor. And hopefully this thing will be up on the road. We got that brand new interior over there. I think I sourced a parts car that has all black interior that I can get it off of and there is someone locally selling M3 rears that has bolsters and some pillars so I'm gonna hopefully cop both of those and we could start the interior but other than that this shit sounds terrible it is correcting itself a lot so let me just reset these codes and we'll come back to this zero codes remaining so this thing should be a fresh slate uh i'm not gonna go drive right now but um maybe tonight definitely or tomorrow i'll go for a quick little drive and we'll see if it's any better we'll see if it corrects itself but if there's still camshaft codes i don't really want to be driving it or going too far so we might just let it be for now 
back to the hood struts. I'm pretty sure they sent me the wrong one because if you watch this, that's it. It won't close all the way. So I'm pretty sure they just sent me the wrong ones. So now I have to buy new ones because those don't work. So it is what it is. Uh, it'll do for now. I'll just take that side out. We're going to be working on it anyway. So it's not like it's that big of a deal. But I'm not sure what else I'm going to do this video. I think I'm going to stop here. We'll come back to it with another episode.